Greek legends. So, in Greek mythology, a lot of the lessons that they try to teach uses a lot of symbolism, especially in uh, their engravings made about the legends themselves. So, I wanted to go over a couple of those images and then share my personal view on them and some of the legends themselves. So, going into the Greek world. So, Greeks lived in a world of gods, a world where everything you do is seen and judged by those above you. This ranges from the loving and tender hand of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and femininity, to the all wrathful hand of Ares, the god of war and destruction. The world that they lived in was full of magic, myth, and heroes. They believed that any man could live a life of adventure and triumph if he was brave. These accomplishments would leave to the gods' favor and a life of wealth and power. But it was a very tedious line between bravery and treachery. This led them to create a guideline of sorts through stories and legends to teach lessons on how to traverse the world of the gods. These stories covered anything you could think of from the beautiful feeling of love, the self-absorption of narcissism, in this image, it shows a man named Narcissus, if I remember correctly. He is completely absorbed with his own self-image. As you can see, he sits at the edge of the pool and stares at himself, I think, until he dies forever. And all the way to the heroism of battle. So one of the huge stories and legends of Greek mythology was of Hercules. In one of his 12 labors that he was tasked with was killing the Nemean lion. And this is an image portraying that. So throughout time, these stories have been depicted through art. What is so interested about these works of Greek myths and stories is that they tell a story in itself. These images have such small details that can be interpreted in many ways. For example, take this image. This is Ixion on the wheel in Tartarus. The very short version of this Greek story is of presumption. This man thought that he could sleep with Zeus's wife, and of course, Zeus was not happy. Upon Ixion's death, he was sent to Tartarus, Greek hell, where he is to spend eternity spinning on a wheel that is next to a flame burning him. Now imagine spinning on that wheel forever. The only happiness that Ixion will ever know is when he spins on the side without the fire. I like to see this as a lesson in overstepping. Ixion presumed that it could sleep with Zeus's wife. In his presumption of reaching for the highest fruit, his highest form of happiness now is simply not burning for a few moments before turning over to the flames yet again. Now that goes into the legend of Tantalus. Now looking at this engravement, before hearing the actual legend itself, you can still take away the gist of the story. There's a man in a river, reaching for a fruit that he doesn't seem able to quite reach. To me, this image tells a story of want. Wanting something that you cannot have is something I'm sure that everybody can relate to. Now looking into the Greek legend behind this engraving finishes the rest of the story. This is a man named Tantalus a man who thought himself a close friend to the gods. He had dinners on Olympus, basked in their favor. He had all their gossip and their stories. Now Tantalus let this gift of closeness to the gods get to his head. He saw himself almost even with them. To test his theory of the gods not being truly all-knowing, he told other mortals of their gossip and their personals, and he was still not punished. He then presumed the gods to be fools. To tie the rest of the story off for the sake of time, he killed his own son, cooked him, and served him up on a platter for the gods to eat, to show that they were not all-knowing. Now, there was one god that did take a bite of his son that he cooked for them. This was Persephone but she was consumed by grief because, or sorry, Persephone's mom, Hikate, 
um, because she was consumed by grief um, from Persephone's absent in Tartarus, but that is a different story. But uh, Zeus saw through this deception pretty quickly and cast Tantalus down to Tartarus. Now, this is where the poeticness of the Greeks come in. They gave this man their presents, food, ambrosia, the most delicious drink and like icker of life and anything that he could ever want and all the comforts of Olympus. So his punishment after he cast all that aside is to never be able to reach any of these again. As shown in this engraving, he's in a river with a fruit tree. But he is cursed to be forever parched and starving. But he can never reach either the water to drink or the food to eat next to him. Forever wanting what is just out of his reach. Now, I personally connect with some of these stories in some personal ways. But I also think that they are very fun and interesting to learn about. Um, I actually have the Wheel of Ixion and the Legend of Tantalus tattooed on my arm. Mainly because I think they're cool, but um, the symbolism that is able to be used to portray such detailed stories is pretty amazing to me. And I um, wanted to share that at the end of this presentation as well. So thank you for watching to the end.